Welcome to RDWorks Learning Lab again. Uh, we're going to carry on this session roughly where we left off in the previous session with our horse picture. Now today we're going to try and produce this horse picture with dot graphic as opposed to the net graphic that we used in the previous session. The, the result of this session could finish up horribly wrong but bear in mind this is a learning experience so hey we take it as it comes. So I have fumbled with this software just a bit um, to give the impression that I know what I'm talking about when I speak to you guys. Quite a lot of where we're going today is new territory for me as well. So I think the first thing that I shall do is do a control C for this picture which is on the screen and we'll stick another one down beside it control V because I want to work with two pictures. Right, before we dive into the graphics itself and start doing something with these pictures, I'm just going to go across here to the bitmap tooling that's at the top here. And we're going to take a look down here at the bottom. And you'll notice that I have set the interval to 0.3 of a millimeter. Now that's the scan interval because bearing in mind this is a scan image and as we work across these pictures we're scanning lines and every time we scan a line we then move down by 0.3 every time we scan a line. We're now going to open up a bitmap handle on our first picture. And I've already shrunk this picture down uh, as we did in previous session and you'll see that the pixel um, resolution is 1024. So in this picture we have control of the output resolution and at the moment the output resolution by default is set to the same as the picture resolution which is 1024. Now remember we said the scan lines are 0.3 of a millimetre apart. Every line that goes across the page now is going to have 1024 dots per inch before it gets to the other side. When you stop and think about it We've set the vertical scan down the page here to 0.3. The dots are not going to change size. They're going to produce probably dots about 0.2 or 0.3 diameter, maybe even bigger. Therefore, what is the point of having a load of dots sitting on top of each other across this page? We may as well reduce the resolution of the number of dots so that they sit next to each other as the lines do. So really we're looking at dots which are 0.3 diameter per inch. Now there's 25.4 millimetres in an inch and if the dot is 0.3 that means we actually get 85, not 1024 dots per inch. If we reduce that to 0.2 of a millimetre dot it goes up to 127 and if we reduce it to 0.1 pitch every dot that's still only 254 dots per inch, a quarter of the resolution that we're currently being offered. I think that probably we might start our picture off with 85 dots, which is a sensible, what I consider to be a sensible theoretical resolution. Now we'll go into this dither command. Uh, this no longer has any function because it's nothing to do, it's all to do with net graphic. And we will choose dot graphic. It's as simple as that now. So we've just do apply to view and we take a look at the view looks a bit strange but if we apply that to the source whoops okay get rid of this and then we zoom the source in and out there is a point where it uh, obviously there's an interaction between the dots and the resolution of the screen and that's why it looks strange at times. I don't know what this strange artifact is here. We'll give it a try. You might ask the question, why have I put a second picture in there? Well, let's just put handles on that for a second. And we'll go back to our bitmap handle. And this time, we're going to do something called invert. We're still going to put our resolution down at 1000, from 1024, we're going to set that to 85 dither, dot graphic, and apply to view. Now it might look a bit strange, but 
I think that anything that's black will be scanned or cut. On this left hand picture here anything that's black will be laser cut and in this particular picture anything that's black will be laser they'll be scanning across this this area here so we shall scan black and then we'll go dot 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 where the black dots are not where the white dots are so let's see whether or not we can get any more detail in the eye by just changing the contrast and the uh, let's put the contrast and the brightness up by 10% and see what we get nope contrast down to zero just leave the brightness there at about maybe let's track it down to about 10% see what happens I think that's probably the best of all worlds so we'll do apply to view and then we'll do apply to source okay and there are our two pictures so we've got a positive and a negative and the reason I've done that is so that we can compare the difference between the two types of picture now you wouldn't think about normally producing a negative picture but depending on the surface that we're going to etch it onto it may work so we're just going to check what these outputs might look like with our preview and surprisingly enough the one that's negative might come out quite well now the one thing we've forgotten this time is our little name tag so we'll first of all use Harry again okay and we'll change the size this time to maybe 10 <laughs> let's learn a lesson from some of the mistakes we made last time before we put Harry anywhere near these pictures we need to make sure he's on a different layer so we'll change him to a uh, red layer then we can probably find no blue layer Harry yeah we had him on a blue layer last time so he'll be scanned appear by the same values that we had last time so there he is Harry control copy control V and before we put any of these together let's put a rectangle around here and we'll make that rectangle put dot put handles on the rectangle and we'll make that a red layer which is a cut layer I believe handles on the rectangle again control copy control V and it's already a red layer and let's move that around this one let's not get too fussy this time just put it on approximately and then we'll put our Harry's in place Harry and Harry well there's experience for you that was a lot quicker than the last time and hopefully our tooling should be nearly set up for us so let's have a look at the black yes speed dots are very quick apparently so yeah we can do dot uh, dots at 200 scan yes power I don't know we don't need huge amounts of power to put dots down I think we might drop that to maybe 30 and 30 okay now go for our scan our Harry scan and we could leave that as it was last time because that worked okay and now we do our cut and in fact last time we cut it out of 8 millimeter material didn't we so we actually had to reduce the speed right down to I think I reduced it to 5 and it only just made it through so I think I might use thinner material this time and just stay with 10 okay right and let's move on to the machine well here we are we're not going to bother with all the uh, all the formalities of loading the program and setting up the machine we've done that enough times now for you to know exactly what's going on so I've even done my tracking 
So really all I've got to point out is the fact that I'm using a piece of 1.7 or 1.8 millimeter thick um, acrylic this time. That's not set to the right depth, quite an important thing. That's about right now. That's the clearance under the nozzle which will give me the correct focal height. We'll turn the air pump on. The air assist, the pretty pathetic air assist, but um, I'm waiting some air, for some air filters to come. And when the air filters do arrive, um, I shall start using my compressor again. Okay, let's go. We're actually burning the uh, burning my bed of nails underneath there. I must have far too much power. Let's have a look see what we've got. Yeah, we definitely did a bit of burning under there. <laughs> we've got some uh, soot on the back here. Okay, so here we've got our two pictures on a, on a black background, now that I've cleaned them up. And all I did was clean them up with fairy liquid and a toothbrush, um, just to get into all the dots. And here's what they look like on a white background. You can see there's quite a lot of detail. You can almost see his eye there, when you catch the light right. Now let's go and have a little bit of a look how this is all achieved because I thought it was done with dots and what we have a look at we'll look at this little area here where the ring on his head collar is and this little bit here now if we look carefully we can see just here the ring and then we can see the scan lines and the scan lines are just about touching each other but there's a little teeny weeny gap in between so bearing in mind I set the scan lines to point three um, maybe they could come down to point two and not be quite as obvious because there'd be a bit more of an overlap and when it comes to these um, dots that I thought were going to occur particularly if we look down here we can see behind my finger here that they're not all dots when I put a black background on there you can see there are some dots and then straight lines so depending on the density of the picture that's required, take for example, up here at the top of this nose band, look, we've got stripes that run across there. So I think we could get maybe a slightly better picture by reducing the lines to 0.2 and maybe reducing the pitch on the dots to 0.2. So maybe we should go and try that. Well, the one on the left is our original program and the one on the right has got double the number of dots on it and although there are certain parts of it which are slightly more defined I think on balance maybe I could fiddle with the contrast a little bit but I still think that probably the uh, 0.3 dot spacing is probably better than the 0.2 dot spacing. So there's a, there's a comparison with what we had before. There's our 0.2 dot spacing. And quite strangely, there don't seem to be as many lines in there. Let me compare it with the <coughs> 0.2 graphic nothing has changed absolutely nothing except the density of the dots and the closeness of the lines it seems to make a remarkable difference to the quality of the picture anyway that's of interest it's up to you to play with it well I think our thanks should go to Harry for his contribution to this series about bitmaps and I think the one thing we must stress is you need a very contrasty picture. Scenery and such ain't going to work. Where do we go to next? Maybe we're going to try some rotary engraving. <laughs>